thank you to be with us. Uh, thank you to accept uh, to, to, to join us a few days ago, um, like that. Immediately, you, you answered uh, yes. And uh, so today it's uh, in two parts, as we do usually. You will have the first part where you, uh, you will address the topic, showing some stuff, uh, discussing about some vision of design, whatever it is. And then we have a couple of questions for you already that uh, three, four people uh, share it on your base comp tool that we will ask you. Um, and I will put also on the, on the chat uh, screen on the side, and maybe at some point other people will, uh, will ask more questions on the chat. But I will conduct the sort of interview to keep, uh, to keep the rhythm. And we will try to keep that for one hour maximum total. So like that, people can, especially the people in the US, there is only one actually, <laughs> uh, can start their day. Yes, Christine, yeah? yeah. Oh yeah, we've And we can started. start to cook in Europe uh, for, 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 yes, the people in South, because the people on North, it's already over. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Okay, so Marina, welcome, please start. Thank you very much, Jean-François. Yeah, I already had dinner, six o'clock in the evening and it's my dinner time. That's kind of embarrassing, but it's, yeah, I know, it's, it's kind of healthy though, but uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, thanks for the invitation. It's really nice to be with you all. Yay. Okay, and I like the Aitai Pai sign on the back as well. It's uh, well, I, yeah, I can say something about that. Please yeah, do. I, I, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a special thing. Uh, uh, most of the people know this sign, but just for you, it's uh, the original artwork by Aldo Novarezzi. Oh, I did not know that. It's super cool. Yes, you see, you see, you see. <gasps> yes. Uh, yes, it's cool. actually the, the, the real artwork from Aldo Novarezzi. Yes. That is precious. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. That is really That's precious. Yeah. Thanks for showing. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for well, noticing marina yeah thank you for noticing because jean-francois has been doing all these zoom calls and no one says anything about the really? Etapai sign so yeah oh i love it <laughs> no, don't, yeah, don't, like drop the, it. don't drop it face of the wall <laughs> yeah, he, he should do one sign yeah look at that you should do one zoom call which is like let's see our walls you know like what's what's <laughs> beh crazy. behind you <laughs> What do you have up that you're proud of? Mm -hmm. And actually today, like this, this corner is, uh, it was not intentional in this case, but it is related to what I'm talking about, which is type ornaments. And these are, well, four, there's the fifth one over there. Um, the original broadsheets, the monotype broadsheets of type ornaments, all letterpress printed in the 60s. I don't, let's see if it can. Uh, super cool, yeah. Yeah, beautiful work. Yeah, they are my babies <laughs> and they have been like, it's, it's crazy that this, um, I, I got them as a gift from Paul McNeil, who was my tutor at um, LCC in 2005. And I was doing my final project on type ornaments. And then I was researching things and I was working as a volunteer at the type museum. Uh, and there was only one set which was under the desk of one of the, the people there on the, like a Duncan had a desk with the posters underneath the glass and lots of things on top. So it was impossible to photograph them or do anything. Uh, and then in the end of uh, Paul said, Hey, I have two sets and one is yours. Like, Oh wow. This is one of the best gifts I ever got. Um, seriously and I've, I've framed them as soon as I got back to Brazil back then and they have I have been through some apartments since then and they've been up on the walls of all of them and here when I finally moved I didn't feel at home until these ones were up <laughs> when I finally put them up it's like okay now I'm home <laughs> my type ornament posters are um yeah are up so I'm home it's a uh, it's this really weird feeling but it's it's great so I think there are, I wanted to know from you, actually, I want to interview all of you <laughs> in a way, because I am crazy about type ornaments and there are lots of ideas that I have um, regarding them. 
Uh, what? Are you, are you pointing to? Me too. Me too. I'm crazy yeah. about our mammals. <laughs> Yeah, 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 aren't yeah. they lovely? Like, and well, there's so much that you can do with them. And I've been having, like, since yeah, 2005, I've been writing so many things, but only for my my own sake. And then every time I come up with a project that I need to research and create a methodology, like a, a few years ago, I started this uh, this little notebook that is about like it's tiny type on over there, you know, over there, but then it's like there's a project on like how to create a methodology for creating families of ornaments and then how to set them up and then to create a database of things and to create, and it, it goes on and on and on. Uh, and then think these are projects that are just in my drawers that those things that, you know, like, Oh, when I have time, I'll get to that. Uh, and every couple of years I get back to the ornaments and do something about it. So there are yeah, different things around there also online. Um, there's of course, oh, one thing that I wanted to show is the like, of course, but the type ornament, the best or type ornament ever created. And I said that tons of times is that for me is the Kaaba. And then I have here just a, a few of them and they are these tiny, the Kaaba ornament from Brum Deduce, and they only exist in 10 point size in lead, cast by Inschede. And these are um, eight because there's the A and the B, which is the, the, the ornament and its mirror image. So then when you have four of each, you can put, you know, like in every position, like up and rotate and rotate and rotate. And then the mirror one up, rotate, 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 and you have a square. So you have one square and then two squares. And um, because it's an asymmetrical shape uh, with a mirror image, then it means that it has eight positions and it's the, 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 yeah, the biggest amount of positions that you can have for a type ornament to create borders and create things. And it's perfect because it's half and half. It's kind of yin and yang. So within a square, you have something that is uh, black and white in equal measures. So then it creates, uh, look at that. Just, yeah. <laughs> show me, show me ornament lead type and it just, yeah, start drooling. <laughs> It's amazing. Great. Wow. From Barcelona. Shiny type. From Barcelona. Barcelona. Shiny. Yeah. Very shiny type. So yeah, but then uh, I have worked with um, with a Kappa a couple of times. I can share something here. I just uh, I did not make a specific selection of photos or anything like that, but I can share the screen here. Uh, let's stop or photos. Because Jean-François said, oh, it's a very, um, it's like this very impromptu thing, you know, you just start showing things on your computer. So I'm just, I specifically selected photos that I took at um, Letterpress Amsterdam with uh, Thomas Gravemacher. And that's my playground, that is what I work with, with things. And these are the, the, um, the original uh, sketches from Bram de Duz, like setting the Kaaba. Like the first time I oh. saw that, it was so amazing and um, just crying wow. out of happiness. And it's, it's insane. Uh, Here. Uh, are you the, showing something already? Because I don't see anything yet. Or, no? Or is, or is it just me? I'm showing. Can I see? Yeah. Really? Oh, oh, oh. I only, I see you. I don't see your screen. How do I? Oh, wait. Let, maybe, let me maybe it's stop just share. Me. And I'll do I see, it again. I see your screen. I, okay, let me try it? again. Why do I not see it? I should try the whole desktop. Ah, now, I see, now I see it. Good, Why because I, I selected just one phone? window. So okay. now it's the whole desktop. Um, uh, maybe I was focused on, sorry, it's my, 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 my fault. Okay, sorry, go on. No problem, for me it's the same. <laughs> so here, yeah, this is the, the Kaaba with the, the four positions and then you have the mirror image and the four positions and you just play with it. Um, yeah, the, what I showed before are those, these, sketches and this is like set set exactly in in one hour like set on the 19th of uh, november 2002 precisely in one hour so you would make can the I, can arrangement I, can i have a question it's uh, sure. why these numbers uh what does it what does they mean uh, the, the numbers position, of... yeah the eight positions of the of the kaaba because you have the the kaaba and the mirror image 
and when you fold mm -hmm. it, you turn it around so then here you have one ornament and then it's like one two mm -hmm. three four and then you have the mirror image um five six seven eight but you have the number on the side of of the block uh, no no the the, the, on the side of the block the nick let me open the the tape here i don't know if you can still see my my screen my 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 video can you see the camera oh, yes. the video mm -hmm. yeah on the side of the type you have uh, the only difference is the nick so then you you have one and two so that okay. differentiates okay. A and B. So what is the ornament and what's the mirror image? But then okay. this is like, okay, you have the A and then this is position one, this is position two, this is position three, this is position four. Like it's just rotating it. Wow. Yes, okay. And that's why you have from one to eight. And this is how he mind, like he, his brain would work in knowing mm -hmm. what is the position and how would it would look like. So then just basically by knowing the number, like he would just already put in the right position. So that was a uh, yeah, hand sketch. And then like it was like translated to the numbers and then precisely set in one hour. It's insane. It's amazing. Um, yeah, there's a lot of it. And these are his uh, original instructions. Like hold on, he's a sketch. Like if you sketch, I should turn this around. If you sketch it um, in a nice way, it looks like this. And then if you're doing it fast, you can just do a sort of triangle to just uh, you know, have the shape for it, like to have the, the general idea. And it, it goes on and on and on. And then there are things that we did. Um, we did workshops with it. So this is the result of the, the first mm -hmm. workshop uh, that we had students coming in and typesetting whatever they wanted with a Kaba. And then this was the poster. Uh, then I did, I was having fun with it and just doing a kind of, uh, inspired by Bram's work, doing a sort of like, a, I would call it windmill. So then if this windmill is turning and then the like blowing wind and water and affecting everything, uh, there was kind of a ripples of effect because of this corner windmill. You know, I was just having fun with the, uh, with a Kaba, this is how the box looks like. So then when you have the box of Kaba in, um, in front of you, like to work with, we usually divide a box with A, a box with B or two of each, and then the spacing for it, um, because it's not precisely 10 points, it's just under. So then you need white material that came with it <laughs> to work with that. Otherwise it becomes a very messy, um, typesetting and it's a nightmare so you do not want to work with any other spacing material rather than the spacing that comes with the kaba and then you have different size of spacing and that's uh, just put the box with there and then start having fun it's really great uh, of course there are other ornaments that i work with there at with uh, with thomas uh, and have fun with and these were you know that thomas was uh, was in france before to come back he was living in france for many years and, uh, we have done some stuff together with Thomas. Yeah, yeah he's, he's incredible. He's the, one of the kindest and most generous and brilliant people I've ever met. Yeah, so in the night, was... uh, yes, yes, there was a, a talk from Martin Mayer at Pompidou and uh, mm -hmm. Thomas was there and uh, we, we begin to organize a, a type I in France in 1998 with Thomas. The, the first idea came with Thomas Gravemaker. Uh, two years before it was actually uh, doing or something like that. So yeah, Thomas was Hi. quite an uh, interesting person. Uh, yes, he, he was not doing a, a letterpress at the time, much more design. Or very few, he, he got some, some press, but not doing a lot about that. So the workshop now is, uh, yeah, he, he's a, also a book designer. He does still design, but it's most of the time at the at the letterpress workshop and it's a great one is this um kind of willy wonka world like you go into like it's a very small place but then all the time he's switching things around and has all these little treasures and things like every time you go in there you see something else uh so i highly recommend for anyone well when you can travel 
if you go to Amsterdam, go to Letterpress Amsterdam. It's uh, seriously you show wonderful. one of the image of the place you have your, on your uh, yeah. Photo, uh, uh, I think um, here, like later on, this is uh, with us here. Yeah, could you show one of the image but large screen? Yes, to see the place. Yeah, nice. Can you see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice. That's from outside the, the, the photo. No, this, yeah, this is just this is like from the, from the almost from the entrance. Mm -hmm. And there are things like this, like he's creating his own um, drying rack. So then he's putting this uh, wood um, wood parts on top, and then you just hang the sheets here to dry. And then yeah, yeah there are like yeah. all these little things here and there. Oh, here you can see that the, the sheets drying. Yes, the prints yeah. Yeah. drying. Uh, yeah. So there are all the, like this was when we uh, we finished the the Kaba Mandala, like this project. And then uh, we had a, a little party, and then that's uh, where you see the workshop. This was, yeah, the latest thing that we did with the with the Kaba. We had a little exhibition with the original material from from Bram, uh, and as well as like there are eight sheets, which is like four parts of a uh, one round shape of a mandala, and then you keep rotating it to get the other ones. Uh, anyway, and we did a. We did a, you, you see these little things, you know, like you're going for, for, for furniture, for white space, and then suddenly you, you just like, okay, I need this size. Oh, and then you, you're faced with cards like that. It's, it's adorable. Uh, the space is amazing. But basically, the, like circling around this idea of um, type ornaments, um, I'll just stop this one. Uh, they, oh, and before that, there's another. I'm not sure if you can see on the background. Yeah, there's another um, project that like I can share some links later. This is uh, written years ago, but to describe another project that is also like in, just with type ornaments and goes on. And um, just since it's an introduction, I want to get to the main point uh, before instead of just going on and on and on about all the projects with ornaments. Um, so basically, yeah, I love them, obviously. And every time, like working at Type Network, um, producing promotional material for the typefaces, like of course, all typefaces have, you know, like basic um, encoding, uh, Latin one and, and so on and so forth, like depending what the typeface is coming in, like they, they also have other languages, but the basic set is always there. So I'm always looking for what's extra, what's different, like besides, of course, the style of the typeface and um, you know, the, the little details here and there in the letter forms, but I'm always <laughs> attracted by how designers are including other elements to work with it. There was one thing at a phone bureau that people were always designing, like there's, most of the typeface have a party character, so then it's, oh, there's something always there that is connected to the idea of the typeface. So for me, like the whole uh, promotional material comes from uh, sometimes the, the basic ideas come from those extra characters. So what is there that no other typeface has? Um, and then you can, because we don't, we are not illustrated, like we are not illustrators, we are not illustrating things. So then what can I use from the typeface itself to illustrate a, a page with type, but without illustrating something from scratch that would be my own own work, you know, like showcasing the type designer's work. So basically I'm using the type designer's work to showcase it even more. Um, and I have, a, it, I, I have a question. I have a small question about that because uh, typeface are, are completely, um, uh, they change the universe depending on the way you use the typeface. So mm -hmm. uh, a typeface can, can um, can um, give the feeling to be like, uh, you know, a Dido has the feeling to be uh, something from Napoleon era, um, early uh, 19th century, but people use it in very dry way or very modernistic or, or very much for fashion, very delicate. So the way you use the typeface change the typeface. Mm -hmm. But when we put ornaments with it, ornaments from the time, Suddenly, typeface are not abstract shape anymore, who change depending on the context of use, but bring back to the historical reference or roots. You see what I mean? So 
it yeah. makes the pay face less uh, 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 less um, more connected to a part of history so more old in some way so maybe it can be dangerous uh, because it, 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 as you say it gave it, it illustrates the type face so it brings back to the historical roots of the type face not to something more you know uh, it can be used for everything so it's not dangerous about the, what do you no, think no i don't think that? so at all like unfortunately i cannot show you something that i've done recently because it's not released yet so i cannot show you the graphics but I, I can tell you that there is something that is very old and very historically based that we designed with a complete, like the, the colors that we chose and how to, to set it's kind of psychedelic. So mm -hmm. it's not connected to its roots at all, even yeah, though the ornaments and everything very are very old. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. Psychedelic is very old. Though. Yes, but then it was it's, when I was it's a young, different... But... I know, but it's a different old, like we are psychedelic, we are talking, you know, past century, like this typeface, we are talking centuries ago, <laughs> inspired by something centuries ago. So then it's, uh, yeah, like with, like the, it's, it's a psychedelic feeling of the colors, not necessarily. Um, anyway, it's, if yeah, you see yeah, the yeah. graphics, they are kind of like the 90s to an extent, <laughs> but so it, you can mix a lot of references in the way you use it. And I don't think that because you, you added ornaments that is, um, you know, time, it's slotted in a specific time frame just because it has uh, some pictograms or ornaments or something that is referencing an, a certain style is the same way of uh, other, other patterns. Like if, you know, if you get, a piece of fabric with a pattern from uh, from the twenties, but then you can cut it in a different way with a different silhouette for you no know, clothing that will make it very now. So you you can mix and match and remix things in in many mm. different ways. Um, but my I, um, there are other people that are uh, researching things about ornaments and but my own um, idea of it is that. It's, it's really tricky to keep adding ornaments because most people don't care about them and don't use them because it's really hard to use it. Like every typeface has a different um, system of where to put those shapes, uh, how to organize them. So then if, you're, if you typeset a text and then you change the typeface, your text still there. You still read the same thing. You just change the style. You change the voice, but the text is still there. If you do something, if you do a, a pattern with ornaments, if you change the typeface, it's come, everything is gone. Because everyone has a different way of understanding where those shapes are going in a character set. So that messes everything up. Because can you imagine like if we could, if you were able to create a, a system for where to put things and then you typeset a border and then you just change the typeface and you change the style of the border, but the essence of your border is still there. Your pattern is still there. Uh, we you can do that if you keep uh, this always keep profound fonts because we use the same Unicode or uh, PUR for everything. So if you switch the typeface, you will have different arrows depending on the typeface, but still on the same position. Yeah, that's great. And you will have yeah. you will have the same star, but not uh, obviously always a star, but similar to a star. On the it will change the patterns. So if you switch from uh, Ambroise to Alumi, the, the tone will be completely different, but the pattern, uh, not at 100% because it's not the same uh, size and number of ornaments, but still or bats, but still uh, you will keep the idea. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, exactly. We, That's yeah. the idea. But then it's, yeah, it's yeah. easier yeah. to keep it consistent within the foundry. But then once, okay, we, we chose one typeface from you, and then we chose a typeface from another foundry, and then it's gone. Yeah, yeah, but uh, for the pattern to do border is difficult. But if you try to always add uh, unique value from that uh, ding bat, something like that, similar elements uh, yes. on your ding bats, if you take the time, you take two, three hours to try to find the right shape, who looks very similar. Uh, it can be online on everything. You switch the typeface, you still have something who fill the typeface with a different style. But you will feel, as you say, but as, as you 
say perfectly, most of the people never add any Unicode value to such yeah. rules, so it stopped to work. But for me, it's very crucial. Yeah, and it's to difficult to... because they don't have. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's accessible. Yeah, so they don't have. Way. They write Unicode values. They don't even show online, or it's difficult to find. Or many people don't go yeah, into yeah. the glyph palette to see if there's something else. Uh, and you were, as you were saying, like dingbats are actually easier because you do have specific slots for specific drawings. But then for borders, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm personally interested in ornaments to create borders and most, uh, and even better, patterns. Uh, my mm -hmm. idea is like ornaments for patterns. But, and, and in that sense, uh, it's, it's really, really difficult. Yeah. So yeah, I, we, we, can, we can keep discussing and then I want to, to open to, to, not, to, you know, to listen to you and your ideas about type ornaments to create borders and patterns. And if you have any, like if, if you try to typeset it, if you try to design it, uh, how, when you're using it, how does it feel like and what you would wish that you would do? <laughs> uh, because Sebastian showing the pizza to the screen, so I have a <laughs> for him. Pizza at uh, 6.30, come on, it's too late. No, it's not. It's not late. Like as I heard, at uh, six o'clock is the time for the kids to eat. Uh, so people who have families oh, eat yeah. at six, and then yeah, the normal time is a bit later, but not that much. But it's later. <laughs> okay. Uh, you want to have a conclusion about your uh, ding bag? No, I want to know thing? from. No, I, this is a uh, ongoing, like I don't have a specific conclusion, like I just have open ends at this moment, like we can keep talking about it and I can say, you know, like there's this project, that project, but the, the whole idea is that the way that we treat um, type ornaments in the digital way, like we, we advance so much with the, uh, with the font formats and how to treat letter forms and how to do things and all the processes and tools and things like that. But ornaments, like it, it's a cry for help that it's this thing that is kind of neglected on the side, you know, like there's no unified things like, oh, maybe let's do this or let's do that. Or it was like a working group or something it's like, oh, let's create something. So it's, uh, yeah, individual people interested in things. But then, yeah, I, I'm, I'm also to blame that I have this, uh, all these notes and things, but I haven't done much myself in order to to do something with it so but i i want to hear from others like if this is interesting at all because then sometimes i feel like this lunatic on the side that loves ornaments and <laughs> most yeah, so, people so, don't uh, care about so maybe, them uh, at all marina we can you we can ask to everybody uh, what they think about ornaments does they use them or does they draw them yes. so christine uh, say something well i don't draw them i i love them though and I used to work at a letterpress, the Star Shaped in Chicago, and they have tons of ornaments and they do a million ornamental layouts. So I'm really familiar with like your love. Oh my God, is the dream, like that's the dream place for me to go to. <laughs> oh, you have to go. Jennifer Farrell has like the most extensive archive. She's, um, she's captured a lot of the like lost type elements from the Midwest. So a lot of times people will donate to her as well as um, uh, Hamilton would type is north of where she is. So, and there's also a lead foundry up there and she'll, she goes and makes like her own ornaments out of lead. Yeah, I've seen the fashion lead. design. It's, it's really- Yeah, that was my first job. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so I was like, I don't know if I really like what I'm doing here. Maybe I should do something different. I was like, I might go black. <laughs> uh, but uh, she uses a lot of ornaments. And for me, the way that I always imagine them is really old fashioned. So the way that you were showing them, it really appealed to me because it's much more modern. And there's such a like difference between what they're doing there which is like really showing the true purpose of what ornaments were created for which was borders around type that was set for books and um 
I love the way that you're working with them from the letterpress Amsterdam, because that to me is, it's beautiful and inspiring. And that would actually bring out my interest back to ornaments. Cause I don't really find them that particularly lovely when they're set around type. I find it to be old fashioned and it's not, you know, something that my eye is joined towards, but I loved seeing those big circles and half slices and the way that they're, you're mirroring them. So that's like a, a whole new expression to me. And I find that maybe not many people have seen it like that before. So I, I think that there's a lot of, there could be a lot of interest there. Um, uh, John? John yeah, Jones. sorry, I'm on, on mute. I was trying to say so like even something, like even if you use traditional ornaments, you can switch things around like this project we did uh like this um tiles and patterns and things but then we printed the back of them so then this is like if you you know if you turn them upside down you all can also see the yes. really? like this is the back of that yeah 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 <laughs> But then, you know, you can, you can see the patterns and how they behave when you're seeing, um, yeah, in a different position, like from, from it's like the, the reverse, the upside down is the stranger things of ornaments. Yeah, I like that. But yeah, I can, let's keep asking. So, John? Yeah, uh, John, please. Yeah, sure. What I'm thinking about is the web. Like how, do you see a lot of people using ornaments on the web? Cause I don't, but maybe, and I'm, I'm trying to think how you would actually use, how, how would you use an ornament font or font or ornaments from a font on the web? That's, cause those, the thing you just showed, I could see them using them as like a, a background, maybe pattern, something like that. But I, uh, I'm curious if you know anything about how it's being used on the web currently ornaments in particular yeah i'm not such a web savvy person uh okay. so like yeah that like when you're saying like we, it can be used as a background like one thing that i remember from the early days of HTML, it was like yeah if in, instead of doing the whole thing like you get this one element and then you make it repeat yeah yeah all the yeah. time so then just by defining that like if you get a, a small box of like four elements and then you make the repeat and then depending on the position of those elements is going to repeat differently. Um, then you, yeah, you can create background patterns for things, but then yeah, um, yeah, I can see yeah, that being responsive, see that. you can also um, like typeset borders and make them being responsive. Like okay. because I'm interested in specifically for um, like in uh, ornaments for patterns, yeah, in the web, like besides background patterns, like, yeah, someone might have a better solution for like a, a better idea for this, mm -hmm. but I'm specifically interested in this for like analog purposes, like okay. generating, you know, uh, patterns for uh, fashion industry or upholstery. Uh, oh, okay. Well, yeah. That, that things like that. And then, because then you can, it, you can prototype things a lot faster if you have a methodology and then like you can, you can test things way faster. Mm -hmm. And create many collections super easily. <laughs> That's yeah, my thing. Let's go. <laughs> Emma, do you have something to say about ornaments being that use or drawings? Then I I don't um, I love them. I just don't know how to use them at all. I just uh, even in the old specimens, I always look at them and I admire them. But I think that's because I'm more of an illustrator, I guess. But it's so nice to see them done that way. Yeah, more, that's more, all I have yes. to say. Uh, Francisco, Francisco, ornaments, something to say about that? He, he leaves. He leaves no, 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 yeah. I'm here, sorry. I wasn't muting my microphone. Uh, well, I, I, I love them, but I actually know nothing special about it. Yeah, I, of course, I, I love to see it, but yeah, I will investigate more after this conversation. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Adriana? I also think that it's very interesting to see how you use the Marina, but I have I don't have much experience with them. I don't know, I guess I've been focused on trying to um, analyze the letter forms and then see if I'm confident with that and then I would love to explore with ornaments a little bit more. Yeah, that's the whole point, getting people excited to look at the uh, ornaments and get excited about them. 
Mathieu, Mathieu. Thank you, Andriana. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's it's uh, it's it's great that you showed all this metal type uh, ornament because to me, as I, I'm I'm more um, a maker of type than a user of type, I must admit. But uh, for me, they're the perfect example in the digital form of how the how can I say the limitation of type are its greatest power uh, also. If you take a, a, a white canvas in Illustrator where you can draw anything, you're much more free than with a set of ornaments. You can basically design anything, but with just, well, the Kaba is extreme. It's like one ornament, but just with one or 10 puzzle pieces that are all precisely set to have a specific width, suddenly it feels like you can do a lot less than with a pen and paper, but actually you can do a lot more in a very different way. And I, I I mean, it's a very telling uh, metaphor of what type is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then talking about like the square, the limitation of the square, if we think about the translation of ornaments in, um, yeah, in letterpress that we are defined, like we are defining by this bounding box that is lead type that you put one next to the other to digital, we are not even limited to that white square. Like we can go beyond that. Um, and I'm saying this because like my pro like when I was investigating things back in 2005 that I got the posters, um, I made this uh, type like type families of uh, just yeah, dingbats and ornaments of uh, succulents. And there are four of them. Um, but then depending on the letter, there's a different position where they fall. So there are things that are regular. So for instance, here, like these, these four, they are the B, D, P and Q like lowercase and uppercase. So then out of this, you would get, like if you typeset with that, you would get, of course, uh, something that is regular, right? Uh, something that is uh, traditional. And then you have the ones that are mirrored vertically. So then this would be like the M and the W. And then you have others that are uh, mirrored uh, horizontally. But then uh, there are some of them that are kind of loose in the box and they are going beyond the, the bounding box. So then you can do some things like this, that is, it looks like completely random, but it's just because they are not um, defined by those, yeah, the bounding box and they are not um, as regular as the others. So then each letter would have a like a specific place where that would fall. And then is it in the same thing as uh, Jean-Francois was saying, and then in the bound, like you, you define where they would happen. So then when you change the style, like you, you change the typeface, you just change the style, but then you would keep the pattern going. So then, yeah, there, there were four of them. And then uh, there's one that is more bubbly. The other one is not that. So then depending on how it would happen, so they have, but it's all succulents. So, it's, <laughs> but yeah, that's, Sebastian, that's uh, so cool. Yeah, Sebastian, uh, pizza patterns, please. You have something to say about the pizza patterns on ornaments? Well, sorry to drop in so late, but uh, always nice uh, to be able to drop in. But um, yeah, what I saw uh, of the, the patterns that you're showing and uh, the ornaments that uh, arise um, through typesetting, I had uh, immediately a link with uh, uh, some work that Julien did, Boogie Paper. He also made like this 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 pattern type, and I have a huge ass poster. And I have yeah, it yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, and also yeah, here he comes. Yeah. Yes, those kind of things. Yeah. And I, I oh, really the, yeah the <laughs> art that Mathieu is showing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and also the the I believe what Jean Francois is showing is also part of a typeface that he made, right? Is that yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah the same as the one uh, from Matthew. Yeah, yeah. The same thing. Yeah, the same thing. And what I what I liked about that, and maybe this this is completely off topic, is uh, is that there there seems to be like this level where ornaments and and type meet, uh, especially in the 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 typeface where you can alter like how big the the whole uh, uh, line uh, can be. So. That for me would be something really interesting to 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 look into uh, for myself in terms of typesetting uh, 
uh, patterns through letters and then creating a bigger picture from that. But uh, otherwise, I don't use them that much. But uh, I've been looking into, uh, uh, I've been reading, writing, illuminating and lettering. And they talk a little bit about uh, ornament, uh, ornaments as well. So for myself and calligraphy, I, I try to learn a little bit more about it and even find ways to combine uh, the two. So, yeah. And then you're talking about like the, the example from, from, um, from Julien in terms of having the ornaments as building blocks in order to create letter forms. Yeah, but are... it's the other way around where the letters create the uh, um, a pattern. That's the one that Jean-Francois was showing. It's, uh, it's, it's a typeface where you can create uh, like a huge A that has lines going through uh, the whole poster. I don't know the name of the, this typeface, but Mathieu might know it. Um, I, I don't have the name either. Name. Uh, me, I can say something about ornaments. But I will share the screen, it's more easier because it's actually what we're doing uh, right now. So I will show you something. Uh, yes, this one. I will not, uh, yes, that, you see the, the screen here? Yeah, that's my screen sh sh share. So uh, we, we're finishing a, a cast long typeface, but on it, um, I, I wanted to have, um, you know, I do uh, interpolated ornaments since um, um, 20 years. For, in Ambroise, there were some uh, ornaments on patterns, depending the weight. So here we do, um, we have done um, ornaments, but uh, um, with, uh, with uh, optical size. So the ornaments are not the same depending the, the size. For small Perfect. or for large, it's depending. So, this one is more delicate because it's for large size. And this one is more, you know, less to trust because it's for small size. On, on even, we continue with that. And uh, we have different kind of contrast. So like that, we can do borders. And then it continue. And we do a, a, even because we have an open face. So we have open face version optical size of the same ornaments. So the open face ornaments optical size version. So the contrast on the white, the white part inside, depending of the, you know, of, of the typeface, so, so it changed. So the result is completely beautiful um, and completely crazy because we have to think about all the counter acts on the weight, act on the contrast act. And I have another, another one we work also on. on that's the same, but here it's little more because it's optical size on weight together. So there is, there is four masters on the same arrows on the four masters. So we have to switch everything to be sure that every, everything works very well. The same for arrows like that. So like that, we can play with them as this one. And uh, it's little crazy. And the last thing I can show you is this thing. And here you it's see not the crazy, border. it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, so th the border changes depending on the, of the, of the typeface. You can see that the, the, the typeface change. You see the name of the typeface change on the way change all the time. So like that, you have the border to switch. On the same with that, you switch the weight on other things. So like that, we can have fun. With, uh, with a pattern, on the same with, uh, with the arrow, something like that. That's it. That's the current uh, craziness uh, to, to, to do the typeface this day. Yes. No, that's yes. absolutely perfect. And um, I, I, when I, I, I get a typeface that has ornaments, I get even more excited if it changes according to the weight of the typeface, because it doesn't make sense for you to use even a, like an arrow with a, like, yes. oh, we have the same arrow throughout all the weights. Like it does not match. And then when I was showing this little booklet and showing like the system, it, it is yeah, also yeah. about optical sizes of creating elements that then you can create a pattern like either for an iPhone cover or a wallpaper, because of course they, they have completely different scales. Yes, right. yes. It's, exactly, it's exactly the point. Maybe I have a last thing that I'm not sure if it's good or not to show because I- Thank I'm you for sure sharing. It's so exciting yeah, to yeah. see that. Yeah. So 
Let's move to the, um, to the question part. Because we are late. Yes, we speak too much, but it's good. It's good. Um, so the first question is um, experimentation. Yes, I don't ask to Raphael for a point of view about tournaments because he's, la he's late on the, on the match, on the game. So he don't have the right to say something about it. <laughs> So uh, move to the questions, the question part. So uh, for you, uh, Marina, the first question is experimentation on clients works or one interacts with the other one. Sorry, I did not get the question. The experimentation. Yeah, I will on put on, on. I will put here also experimentation oh, on clients works or one interacts with the other. Always interact. Um, yeah, but oh, 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 it works. How it works? Yeah, for instance, oh, like yeah, oh. this this uh, this you know playfulness with ornament itself, it's something that I do out of pleasure, and then like for me, yeah, type network is client work, um, because I'm designing specimens and doing things for the foundries, and then I'm bringing like the things that I that I do on the side that I'm passionate about into the specimens and like all the idea of um, color combos and how to treat uh, patterns and things like that, they, they come across. Um, mm -hmm. This, in terms of experimentation and client work, like it's something that I could see more, not clearly necessarily, but uh, I understand that it's a tricky topic because for instance, I'm kind of stopped for a while, or at least a long, it's been a long while since I've done um, lettering for, for clients. Because I got to a point where everyone was asking the same thing over and over, and that for me was boring. Um, so one of the last, like not not the last project, because that was ages ago. But then, one of the uh, like, like the projects that I got really excited about when I was still living in Brazil, that was um, yeah six years ago or something. It were projects where I could collaborate with the creative directors, and they they could give me like the, just the basics. Um, of what a project would be and then complete freedom and then I could just yeah. experiment with whatever um, in yeah with them so that's where the yeah the client work joins with experimentation like they have a little bit of um, of a briefing and say like this is the these are the guidelines but then within that you can do whatever so if you don't yeah. experiment on the side if you don't uh, keep doing different things then then you don't have much to bring to the table because then you don't have enough time to develop the language like what am i going to do right now but then if you keep sketching if you keep doing things on the side like you have this whole library of experiments that you can bring to the table and then they know you because of that because of the things that you've shown before and then they want more of that uh so then i thought that yeah, a while ago, I thought that people would just keep doing more of the same. And then like there were a reference that was, oh, you know, like this, this campaign from this big brand. And then everyone would come up with a briefing. Oh, why don't we do something like this and this and that? Or like, oh, like that reference. Oh, yeah, you understood it. And then everyone would, because everyone would hint to the same thing. And then it becomes boring. It's like, yeah, but don't, why don't you, everyone hire that person to do the same one? Like, it, it, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, it's exactly like the, the portfolio advice that don't put the work that you have done for clients, but put the work you want to do in the future. Exactly. That's the best advice. And it's a little bit, as you say, uh, your experimental work helps to, to, to open uh, eyes to people you will work for in the future. So, yeah, and in yes, that sense, my portfolio is the worst me. one because yeah. I haven't updated it in years. <laughs> yeah, so it has yeah. nothing to okay. do Some with the kind of work that I want to do. <laughs> So the, next question, so the next question is, um, yeah. Um, it's not only computer, but it's also technology in general. So um, yes, uh, all the two world works um, together. Yeah. So then for instance, this project that I was show, like that, that I'm, I'm going to post here, the link to the Medium um, article that we wrote, it's about letterpress printing and metal type. Oh, wait, sorry, my cat is over the thing. Uh, 
yeah, when we did this uh, was the first attempt, like we were just playing with uh, type ornaments and um, assembling them. Like it was like, oh, and then we printed, oh, we don't like this that much. Um, and then leave it on the side uh, and then just like start over and over and over. And it takes a lot of time, you know, if you're just typesetting metal type and uh, experimenting with creating something, like it takes a long while. So then this was the first edition. And then for the next version, it's like, okay, so why don't we sketch something first um, before typesetting? So for that, like uh, I was already uh, familiar with uh, Python programming and with uh, Drawbot. So then I, uh, we scanned the ornaments that we had available. And then I made, like, I made a, a little, yeah, sort of a, a, like a few code lines so we could uh, type something like we could we could sketch what we wanted with also with numbers and things like that and then it would show the pattern that would come out of it in letterpress so yeah here so we we matched uh um i'm gonna share my screen because it's uh here Shares. it's easier to see so I think like everything is very related. Uh, desktop share. Can you see my, my screen? Yes, yes. So yeah, this is like sketch by hand and then in Ill Adobe Illustrator. And then this is the, um, the drawbot programming and then the actual typeset. So then you see the actual typeset is very close to what was programmed on, the, on drawbot which like we had the just the idea of like the grayscale that we wanted in in illustrator but then mm -hmm. when we started in illustrator it's like okay this is not that precise and it takes a long time so then just by changing the numbers and then changing the the reference in in programming it went much faster and much easier so that's yeah look like this yeah. Yeah. ah yes okay okay it's very clear yeah no. yeah nice yeah, so then, uh, yeah, computer programming and letterpress, like for me, they, they go like hand in hand. Yeah, so the, the, comp yeah, the, the, the programming would make the prototyping faster in order to make um, the work, but like, yeah, letterpress work. But then in, talk, in terms of um, designing something, like my first, my first thing is draw something on paper and sketch, like, it, like to put uh, ideas onto paper it goes much faster to to have mm -hmm. early sketches by hand and then mm -hmm. go to digital so next question um it's it's probably an yes. usual question for <laughs> you but before and after yes yes definitely uh well that that is a is a uh, maybe maybe i have i i will precise um i i have to precise that because there is two kind of there is two categories of people who do, who do type media or two 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 kind of life after type media there is a one who are, were were not into type before type media and become type designer for full time or very close to and in your case you were into type before but you are not full-time type designer after. So why? <laughs> why? So why you are different from the other one? You know? <laughs> why the other one are so crazy to continue type based design? You see, you can I, have the question in different way. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. No, I do love type design and I have lots of projects that um, I want to work on. They are still in my drawers and Every now and then, like I look at the type, I was like, oh, I should work on this, I should work on that. But then, you know, like life takes over a priority in the things that you're interested in. I think like one of the things that, um, well, there, there are different ways of answering the before and after type media. Um, one is on uh, a personal level, like actually coming mm, yes. to The Hague and, uh, and I say coming to The Hague is because now I'm living here <laughs> because I fell in love with the city. <laughs> so, the before and after that's the next like, question. Yeah. <laughs> that's the next question. Is the same. You can answer the yeah. both together. So, the yeah. next question. Uh, <laughs> yes. So uh, no, I did not. I did not stay. Like I came to the Hague one day for getting to know Type and Media in early 2010, and immediately I spent a few hours here and immediately fell in love with the city. And then I came for the course. And during that year, like it, it just worked 24 seven. So I'd like, I didn't experience the city at all. And I was so traumatized by the workload and everything that I went, like I went back to Brazil and I did not want to do like anything with it. 
and I caught, caught myself coming back more often and staying longer and longer. And people were like, isn't it easier to just move? And I was like, yeah, that's right. And I did. Uh, so it is, uh, it, is, uh, it is something else. Like before and after type media is like, yeah, living in the Netherlands. That's the, the thing. But the, um, in terms of type design is, yeah, I was already involved in uh, lettering, calligraphy and type before. And of course, type media gave me lots of tools and knowledge to go forward. But then one thing that I realized is that I was already designing uh, letters for the clients. And I saw so many talented type designers that admired the work. And I never got to use their typefaces because I was not doing anything, any yeah, graphic client work with them. So like there was no way I needed typefaces for anything because everything that I got to do was design letter forms. So then when I started with, um, yeah, well, Type Network kind of started years before it started. It's, it, that's another story. But then when I got into that, it's like, hey, you know, like now this is my playground. I get to see the typeface from the other side and I get to beta test things um, and, you know, talk to designers when the typefaces are in the making. And then by having a specific point of view, because, yeah, I've been trained as a type designer as well. Um, I can have a conversation on a different level than just being a graphic designer doing typography. Uh, so it's really exciting. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun using type. Um, yes, next question about studio. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> yes, yeah, you, you have a long um, past, you know, a long um, journey into uh, learning. Uh, yes. You know, one MA in graphic design, you have in, yes. in your biography, few school listed one after each other. So your advice uh, or based on your experience, what, what to do? Short, long, um, yeah. that what you have to personal. say about that? Yeah, I, I know that I have, yeah, that I, it's a very personal choice in terms of like, yeah, I went in through many studies, but actually it's even, for me, it's even longer than that in a way, because I consider the conferences and workshops that I took as part of my education. And sometimes they were even more important than some classes that I had in those courses. So um, it's like, what do you need and where can you get it? So like right now I would even, like I was even considering going into another MA, but I did not find the right course. <laughs> so, it's, so, so that's the choice, you know, like for, because when I did the bachelor, I knew like I was, like going around and I knew that I wanted design, but maybe architecture, maybe engineering. So then I went into industrial design and then I found about graphic design within the course. And there was not, and then I found about type within that time frame. So I did not have much time to go in depth on it. So then when I found this course in London that was focused on uh, typography and a bit of type design, I was like, hey, I want that. Um, I want to learn with with people that have more knowledge about that so i went for it and then after a while like doing more and more uh workshops and going to conferences and calligraphy and lettering is like hey you know like i actually want to learn about type design and then those things about learning more typography and learning more about type design is because in brazil at that point there was not much of a culture of typography and type design so i had to go elsewhere to look for that knowledge. And then the, like, it's a crash course. So you, you just go to where people know it and then you, you learn the most that you can learn, the, the fastest that you can do it. Uh, so then you can practice afterwards. Um, therefore, I did those courses. Um, and yeah, for me, they, they, were, they were great. But then if you, if you are in a situation where you can learn by doing and you have lots of people around you that you can use as mentors and enough resources because yeah back then there were no books and there were not many books available there was like you know internet was in early stage so you didn't have so many online resources and things like that so i think that the world nowadays is very different from what it was 20 years ago uh therefore the the way to act like to access to knowledge is very different so right now, yeah, we were talking a bit about it in the beginning of the conversation, like before the video started, I'm kind of have like amplifying my career and having a bit of a switch and going into interior design. And then I was looking for interior design courses and I did not find anything that looked relevant to me. 
So then talking to people, they said, yeah, you already have most of the things that will be taught. So just go, you know, start doing it. And that's what I did. I just started doing it. And now I'm, I, I'm not taking an education on it. I'm just learning by doing. So it is, yeah. I think it's, it's very personal to where, what you want to learn, where you are, the access to resources, the access to like resources being books, uh, internet, people, uh, you know, testing facility. Yeah, yeah. From, from what you say um, in, in behind what you, what you, what you um, telling us, maybe um, uh, the thing we have to, 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 to have in, to, to keep for the future, uh, the conclusion of what you say or from outside, it seems that in fact, we learn every, all, all the time because you, yeah. you refer to five conference and it's a non-ending process. And you speak about uh, online resource and it's probably that everybody is doing in different way. Um, learning is a very personal thing. Some want to stop for one year to do it. Some will do workshops, some uh, watching um, YouTube uh, conference uh, will say working or, or whatever. There is different way, different approach, but we have to learn all the time. Yeah, on its on the chain, the yeah. topic. Yes, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, where yeah. you're going yeah. to look for references. So then, even when I was in the in my BA, I would travel all the time yeah. to go to conferences and take workshops. And then sometimes I would come back, and then the teacher was explaining something, and I already knew the subject because I had already taken a work like the a, a semester worth of that subject was in you know all in one workshop of one week that I had elsewhere, and then it would just yeah. you know emphasize that um, yeah you, it, it's it's up to you like i think nowadays we have access to so much uh it's so easy to to pick and choose and uh, but at the same time it's it's overwhelming the amount of information and where to start so then you need someone to guide you like now i'm I, i'm one of the mentors at um, alphabets and sometimes I get people like this like coming in like okay i want to do this but that there's so much where do i start you know so uh, there was some qu some other question, but you answered right already to them. So I will put the last one is actually one, two, three, four questions in one sentence. <laughs> uh, teaching, uh, the, yeah, the, you know the uh, the balance between teaching and the rest of the life type networks, for example, um, and um, yes, impacts interaction between them a little bit. That's the, the first question between experiment, experimentation on client's work. In this case, it's more between um, teaching on um, the rest of life, all the, all the things balance. Right. Yeah, I got into teaching. Like, uh, this is something that I knew that I wanted to do since I was studying myself, like in, in the BA, like, I was, like my teachers from the bachelor became my friends kind of immediately because I was also like not only going to conferences and doing things, but I was already in the students union and organizing conferences and things like that. So I was in, in contact with my teachers all the time and they became friends. They are like, some of them are still my friends. Um, and I knew that I wanted to like, I, I admire so much what they were doing and this, uh, you know, sharing knowledge and getting you somewhere um, that I wanted to do it. So the, when I finished um, school, like I finished the BA that I went to, to London to get a master. It was not only to learn more about typography, um, but also to have a degree that would get me into teaching because it's easier. Like it would, uh, then I, when I went back to Brazil, I had my diploma from London validate, like revalidated to be valid in Brazil. So I could get into some schools and teach like, and immediately when I came back, um, I was not, I was even like I even wanted to go back to London and stay there for a while, but then I got invitations to teach. So I stayed um, the first from my, the college that I studied and then the teachers that I had uh, while I was studying, they were also teaching in other uh, schools and then they invited me to those other schools. So I kept going, you know, like from teaching here, like teaching at Fati and then uh, Belas Arches and then São Judas and then <laughs> Uh, so I was teaching a lot. Uh, at some point, I was almost full-time teaching, um, but then I was missing a lot of practice. So then I cut back on the teaching hours. Uh, it was getting too much. 
then what, 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 what is your position? What, what do you think? What kind of topic you you teach um, at uh, Type Media or at KBK? Maybe, yeah, now at now at yeah. KBK it's just one day uh, a week. It's Friday, so it's tomorrow. Um, I have first year students of the Bachelor of Graphic Design, and I teach Type Design. Uh, okay. So yeah, for like it's the only um, mandatory type class that they have in the Bachelor. So first they go, like they have one semester with Hido de Boer from uh, High on Type uh, on calligraphy. So they have that as a basis. And then they have a semester with me in type design. And if they enjoy it, which hopefully <laughs> they do, uh, on the second and third year, they can choose Letter Studio as an elective, which is with um, Yus van Rossen, uh, Frank Blockland, uh, Peter Verhale. And then they can, yeah, they, they can spend two years um, doing type design extra and then if they want they can go since so, oh, oh, since so many years are you are you doing uh, this course at, KB, at kbk since at kbk so this is the third year um the third. Really, so really nice. you don't have you don't have yet your students uh accepted that type media no not <laughs> yet <laughs> not yet but I, I know that some of them want to do it uh, they've been, yeah, that, uh, be they've been taking, yeah that, that I think that will happen. Yeah. They've been taking like the uh, letter studio as an elective, like full time, and they've been doing some interesting things. So I'm sure that they would, some of them, they will get there. Uh, yeah. And the, yeah, yeah, the you balance. are the cause of, yeah, yeah. You are Sorry. the cause of, uh, you are the cause of their illness in Kitai design. <laughs> yeah, you, no, I do. You. Yeah, I know. And and this is really nice, you know, because I had teachers like that. In my first year at the BA, yeah, I had yeah. a teacher on like visual methodology and I'm absolutely sure he was the one responsible for getting me into graphic design. Like that first class, you know, like of a yeah. Yes, yes. That, his class, yes, he yes, knows it. Like, his yeah. class got me into graphic yeah. design and then there was one teacher that got me into type design and then no, so it is nice to have that role. I think it's amazing. And yeah, yeah currently it's just like one day per week at uh, KBK. Well, now digitally, right? And we were just having a teacher's meeting before this. We have once a week a teacher's mm -hmm. meeting. Um, but it's just once a week, uh, the, the teaching day. And so that does not, and it's only one semester in the year. So it, it doesn't wait too much on the practice. Like it's, it's okay. It's... Uh, it's fine. And yeah, I, um, I started teaching lots of things. So I, I was teaching project methodology, graphic design and uh, art direction, print, um, printing methods and uh, well, lots of things. And then I started getting tired of it. It's like, oh, I actually like type and typography. So then after I came back from um, type and media that, well, I went back to Brazil after Type Media. I started <coughs> teaching just workshops instead of going back to, to teaching at schools. I was uh, just doing workshops for whoever was interested in that specific topic. You know, I have a, I have a, an idea for you. You want to go into interior design. You, 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 you've seen that there is no real course for you, so you, you, you will practice. But what you can do is to launch a school or a course or workshop for interior designer, uh, but about typography, or to use letter forms in, in interior design. That's what you have to do. Great, I'm actually- Based like, on your last answer. Yeah, that's <laughs> fantastic. No, it, it, but, but the, the idea of um, ornaments and patterns, for me is very yes. connected to interior design. So then I was thinking, you know, like I, I am missing the 3D and I want to create patterns, you know, for fabric, for wallpapers, for this and that. But then that would not be still enough. So then I get to design the whole of the room and then apply the patterns to it. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so that, uh, yeah, that's a great, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's use more. Uh, so please design more ornaments so then I can show them to, you know, to people in interior that they can create their patterns with the uh, type ornaments. Yeah. Okay, does someone have a, a question for? Our guests, Marina, uh, Adriana, Francisco, Sebastian, pizza question, um, Samar, I was overwhelmed with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She answered everything. 
Christine. Yeah, this is wonderful. It's been really this wonderful, wonderful to hear mm. you speak about yeah. all of your background and interests. Uh, uh, yes, my house is finished. Like the house, this one has been finished for, I moved in two years ago. Uh, it was a complete renovation. Uh, sure, well, it shows a, shows yeah, a, a, a bit of a mess. No, no, the, can... the one you showed was just move the computer. Yeah, it now it's a one bit of a mess. Minute. Now there's, yeah, you know, yeah. like the, my cat is there. There's the, the home trainer for the bike. There's uh, piles of uh, yarn because now I'm doing crochet for a client. And <laughs> there's awesome. lots of things. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a mess. But uh, yeah, there's some things on top of the table. Uh, this is, an, I, I moved to The Hague in 2014. Um, and then in 2017, I bought this apartment. And then it took a few months to get the contractor and do the project and, and renovate it. But then I've, I've been living here for two years. And since I moved in, it was already like the, the base was already finished. It was just about getting a few other objects here and there. Um, and it's been a year, just, just over a year that I actually brought everything that I had left from Brazil to here. So then like tables from my grandmother, the, the lamp and the books, I, I got rid of lots of stuff in Brazil, uh, unfortunately, but then there are some uh, painting, well, these came, <laughs> obviously they came and then when they, they were up, they were, yeah, I, then I was home. Uh, so no, the, the, this house is ready. And I posted, I think a few photos, like very few photos on Instagram I started from the toilet, like the, the bathroom and the toilet, and people were like, why are you posting your toilet? <laughs> uh, but I'm really proud of that toilet, really. <laughs> I really love it. And you have no idea how this apartment was before. Like, I had to do everything, like change windows, change electricity, uh, water pipes, uh, heating, everything. Yeah. You know her. Favorite artwork oh. hanging in the house. Yeah, this, oh, uh, yeah. cool. Yes. Really cool. She uh, yeah, this one crazy. is, a, yeah, these ornaments are, are my yeah, forever yeah. favorite. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Please yeah. send me that profile. Please send yeah, me it's on, yeah. on the chat. It's on the chat. Oh, great. Yeah, she's, she's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, these ones she's are the, like, the all time favorites, but there's one that I bought when I bought the apartment and it kind of dictated the color scheme of the apartment. Let's see if I can get you there. It's in the hallway. I get a bit of a tour. Yeah, that, that corner there was is the yellow couch. <laughs> um, yeah, let's see if there's enough to like, because the hallway is navy blue, including the ceiling. And then this is the- oh, nice poster. Entrance. Yeah, and this is also really nice. It's uh, from a graffiti artist in Sao Paulo. Yeah. Completely. Good. 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 Yeah. These are some Thank of you my... for the tour. Yeah, this... oh yeah. yeah, this is a Gabriel Mat There are some things around. Like there's a lot of type around. So then this is calligraphy from uh Gabriel Martinez Meavi. He did it for me on my birthday. And then there is yeah, up yeah, there there's exactly the my look... point. letter forms for for Interior. Interior. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's the yeah. Luca Barcelona, <laughs> John Downer, yeah, Julien Crier, and uh, yeah, hat show print. <laughs> and many, yeah, here, Laura Maseyer, and then, yeah, type in media. There are lots of things around. And of course, uh, yeah, Kaba, Bram de Deuce. Yeah, yeah. Alan Keaching, yeah. and <laughs> okay, yeah, there's cool, lots cool. of type around. Thank you, Marina. Um, ah, yeah, we have uh, one question. Favorite artwork oh, yeah. in, the, in the house? Yes. Sorry? Yeah, that, that's what I was answering. And then you were talking about letters for interiors. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> this is for an 11-year-old boy. Oh. <laughs> yeah, this I tried Macula from Jacques Le Bailly, but then the, the, this part did not work so well. <laughs> But still, so, it is a yeah, there is people on the website who say I can work for any kind size of clients, very big or small. On you is for every age. <laughs> yes, <laughs> young, very young to very old clients. That nobody yeah. puts that on their website. Every age, every 
every range, no, range of age yeah. clients. <laughs> My first client, uh, the, it's a house and then it's a family of, of three. And actually the one who had very specific requests and made the whole thing, like he was my inspiration for the whole house to work, is an eight-year-old boy. He said, I want my room to be a jungle and I like dark green and I want plants. That was <laughs> everything. <laughs> so Mathieu, you wanted to say something? No, I don't want to say it, but I, I have an anecdote about the Kaaba ornament, and but it's very long and boring. So, but I feel like it's the only place where it would remotely interesting. Please, people, so. yeah, please, please, please. We will okay, that. cut me short if it's well. if it's too boring. But uh, when you were at Thai Paris Marina, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, I think it was two years ago, maybe three years ago. Uh, like uh, this part of your uh, lecture with about the Kaaba ornaments and I was in the audience and I was like oh this is this is amazing I I, I need this book so during the lecture I went to uh, the Tipotec uh, bookshop and ordered the book and felt really great about my uh, my shopping and then I I waited for the book to arrive one week two weeks three weeks started to wonder like hmm, maybe maybe something is is happening i should go check at the post office i didn't get any notes in my letterbox or anything uh so i i go to the post office and say i'm, I'm expecting a package and but i haven't got anything and the the person is like oh yeah that uh, so you have to know in, in Paris, you for most building, you need to have an access code to enter the building. Uh, and the mailbox are behind these doors. So not everyone can access the mailbox. And uh, the postman has a special access ba badge so he can open all the building and deliver the mail. And the person at the post was like, oh, but we are now subcontracting sub package delivery to private companies. And private companies are not allowed to have these special keys that open all the doors. So they can't access your mailbox to let you like a note saying that you have a package, a package waiting for you at the at the office. So this is a bit weird because it means like someone in a truck is just running around, not being able to deliver things and then go back to the post office and say, sorry, didn't deliver anything. Yeah, so I, I was like, that. how? how do I get my, my package? Is it here? And the guy is like, oh, it's very likely that it's here. Uh, so I'm like, oh, so can I get it? Uh, he's, he's like, oh, I need the package ID. Uh, I'm like, I, uh, how do I get that? It, and he's like, oh, it's in, we left, we usually it's in the note that we leave in your mailbox saying that you have a, you are expecting a, a, a package. I'm like, yeah, but the person leaving these notes don't have access to my mailbox. So how can, it's like, I, I'm sorry, you need the note to get the, the package. I, I, I have no way to locate it uh, without it. So it's a bit of, bit of a Kafka situation. So I, I go back home and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna write Tipotec. Maybe they can give me like a tracking number or something. So I read them and they were like, oh, we were about to write to you because the package came back because you you didn't collect it at the post office. So it stays there for two weeks and then it goes back. So I tell them the situation and I, oh, so they call the Dutch post office and the Dutch post office says they can't refund the delivery because there is a two weeks delay where you can uh, ask for a complaint. So, so Joanna Bilak, I'm sorry, Matcha, I, I will have to bill you again for for a shipping cost and I was like fine it's 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 I guess it's my country fault so I should I should pay for it and uh and then she's like oh wait we're going to Paris next month so maybe I can take the book with me uh leave it at our hotel and you can pick it up whenever you want I was like perfect let's do that I've already waited a month for this book I can wait another month <laughs> So then she sent me like a month later, she's like, oh, we're in Paris. The, the, the package is waiting at this hotel at the reception for you. I'm like, great, I, I will be in this neighborhood in two days, I'll, I'll collect it. And uh, 
So I think they were leaving the day after or something. So I didn't get to meet them, but uh, I go there, I go to the reception and the person is like, oh yeah, yeah. I remember someone left a, a package, should be here somewhere. And uh, she looks for it like for 10 minutes and it's not there. So she goes in the back room. She goes like half an hour later, no package at all. She's like, oh, the I only do the night shift. So maybe the the staff from the day shift put it somewhere that I cannot locate. I'm I'm so sorry. Can you come back during the day and I'll I'll leave a note and I'm I'm sure it'll figure it out. So two days later again I, I go back there and uh, meet the the day uh, desk person. It's like oh yeah my colleagues told me about it. I, I'm I'm so sorry because the other day the postman came delivering some some package and uh, <laughs> Joanna had left the package in its original post package so with with my address on it and she was like oh this must have been a missed delivery because this is not our address <laughs> at all so the, the postman was like oh I'm I'm sorry I'm gonna take it back and I'm gonna we're gonna we're gonna deliver it to this address <laughs> So we went back to another loop where it went to my post office, couldn't access my mailbox, and I, I had to wait for three weeks for it to, for me not to collect it, and it went back to Joanna, who wrote me like, what, what the fuck is happening? Like, what are you doing with this package? And I, so yeah, eventually she, I had to pay again for the shipping, and it was shipped to my uh, uh, wife's uh, office where they have like a proper package reception system. <laughs> I got the book like about eight months after I, I collected, I ordered it. Oh my God. That's a happy that ending. That was the cream, the thick one, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah, very happy ending. It's a great book. I'm very happy. It's always good. I'm happy. very happy that you got it, that, I'm, that I inspired you to get it, but I'm really sorry about that. Yeah. You know, I, 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 yeah, it's a fabulous story. I, I have, since two or three years, a, a, post, uh, a post guy who was graphic designer. So he knows that we do doing type and even do calligraphy. And uh, so we discussed the other day, he was coming at the door and he always wants to speak about typography. So I, I give him some, um, some, you know, some goodies from Typo Foundry, specimen and things like that to the guy, <laughs> and he was very happy with that. So the guy, we, sometimes we discuss about that. On, on, you just imagine someone who was graphic designer and say, he's like Marina, he wants to do something else. So I, I was graphic designer, I prefer to be uh, the, deliver, the, the, the post office guy, just imagine. On the other day, he, he showed up and said, I have few calligraphy books, do you want them? Come on, it's good. I say, keep them. Yeah, you will have to use them one day. Keep them for you. Yeah, but the post, the post guy giving me some calligraphic books, it's insane to think about that thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, really good to have a relationship with the, with the post, right? Because here the other day, they, um, Maybe some of you got the, like you were supporting letter form archive and they sent some keepsake via the post, you know, like for supporting it. And then um, here they forced through the mailbox and I got the prints all wrinkled, like all folded. It was horrible. And then I called the post office to complain and they said, yeah, like we'll just file a complaint against the postman. It's like, no, I don't, you know, it's not about, um, the postman is just like, you know, something that is in a hard, like a carton box, like should not be.